Dzień dobry. Um, good morning to everybody. And uh, um, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I will um, try to, uh, to talk a little bit about the changes that we, 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 uh, I think we have all experienced in the last few decades. So uh, this kind of picture might be familiar to uh, some of you who are about my age. Uh, and um, so this was, this was the time when we started schooling. And, and uh, we didn't really talk about media literacy at the time. We talked about education and, um, and teaching in a way was a simple thing to do because there was more or less one truth. And uh, literacy meant the actual skill that we had to uh, obtain. We learned to read and write and do all the rest um, of the basic skills that we needed for the time. And gradually, and at, at first, we did it with books, because books were the only media, more or less, that we were using. We uh, maybe used some radio, and eventually the television appeared, first in black and white, then in color. First we had one channel, then two channels, and then gradually more and more, and eventually commercial channels that uh, came with uh, advertisements, and um, that was a miracle. Well, it was already the time when uh, professionals like us here started to get worried about children and young people, and what is this new media doing uh, to them for their development. Um, nevertheless, we, uh, we could ensure literacy for everyone, more or less everyone. So it was, it was relatively easy. We could say that we were literate. We started to talk about mass media in the late 60s, uh, 1970s, depending a little bit on, on the country and the continent. Um, and mass media education was, was a term used in the 1970s, more so in um, journalism studies and communication studies, not so much in education. But that, that is um, one of the bases for the media literacy, media education as we know it uh, today. Uh, just to give you a short uh, idea, uh, uh, a brief idea about how uh, media literacy education, media education in Finland has developed uh, at the university level and in teacher training. Uh, in 1997, we started. I can say we because I was one of the one of the people starting the uh, media uh, education degree program in um, uh, at the University of Lapland. So that was a university level education for teachers for primary school. And um, and then later on, another university in Finland, University of Tampere, took it over as well. And then we developed uh, master's degree programs and, and uh, PhD programs and so forth. And also international degree programs. So now you can study media education in, uh, in an international two-year MA degree program in two different universities in Finland. Um, that M-E-K-U, that's an acronym for my own uh, department. Uh, we are a government organization. And uh, we were established in 2012 under the Ministry of uh, Education and Culture. I will tell you a little bit more about that. But basically the point here is that we're talking about a very short period of time. Um, we, uh, we haven't been talking about this professionally and for, for a very long time. And it's still uh, an, an area which is missing from many, many uh, teacher education universities or colleges in, in, uh, all over the world. Well, um, back 
then, uh, like I said, teaching and um, an understanding of the world was very simple. It was as it was told to us, or the teachers told us, or we read from the books, and that was the truth. Or from the papers, we believed to the papers. Well, then uh, somewhere in the 1970s, a paradigm change uh, started to happen gradually. I think it's still in a process. So depending from who you ask, uh, this may not be true, but basically what we have done, what we have tried to do in Finland is that we have tried to make a change uh, to the idea how we construct our uh, perception of reality. And uh, in the last few years we have um, renewed our core national curricula in Finland, from early childhood to the secondary level. And uh, there was a new term introduced uh, two years ago, uh, which is called multiliteracy. That includes also media literacy, media education, all different kinds of literacies. Well, I can confess that I'm personally not very happy with the term multiliteracy. It's a, a little bit old fashioned term and uh, we would have hoped that media literacy would have been actually the term that we would, could have used. But basically the idea is that we construct our own reality and it's a different thing for all of us. We hear, see, listen and, and create our own perception of reality. So even if you're a teacher, you cannot expect that all your students will have the same idea about the truth. And of course, this, this is even more true and realistic now when uh, over the last year, uh, year and a half, when we have learned to cope with terms like um, fake news and, um, and um, truth, which may not be true for anybody else than, than for the person who is talking about it, and at the very high level as well. Well, um, I'll tell you a little bit about my own uh, authority. We are a government authority, but before 2012, we didn't have any media education authority. And media education or media literacy education was mainly uh, done uh, by the uh, non-governmental organizations and schools and teachers if they wanted to do so. Um, and now I have to say that in Finland, teachers have uh, a great freedom uh, to decide about uh, what they do. So we have the curricula to guide the teachers, but the teachers can decide what is it uh, they do, how is it that they want to reach um, the goals that are set in the curricula. There's no inspection system, there are no national tests before uh, before the 12th school year, at the end of the high school. That's when we have the matriculation examination. Before that, it is up to the individual teacher what she or he will do when they close the class door uh, behind them. And um, so we trust our teachers. However, we established uh, uh, a new governmental office in 2012 and we also have a number of good uh, policy guidelines uh, directing our work. And um, uh, so my, my department works with uh, different organizations, uh, governmental organizations, private organizations uh, and NGOs, uh, following the policy guidelines that we have. S now I'll tell you some examples about, about the work we're doing. Uh, this is um, one of the big successes we have had over the last um, five years. Um, we, um, we are also coordinating the Safer Internet Center uh, for Finland. And uh, previously there used to be uh, a Safer Internet Day. Well, it does actually still exist in the second Tuesday of the second week 
of February every year. So we still have that, but we felt that it was a, a bit too narrow uh, in, in the focus because it was focusing only on the uh, safety issues and we wanted to br bring in more uh, positive ideas about what the internet is, internet is about. So we developed this Media Literacy Week and uh, for example this week uh, there were about um, 2,000, more, more than 2,700 uh, places, uh, kindergarten, schools, libraries, youth centers, uh, who registered for the week. They got materials and, and they did something with them. We don't say to them what, do you, what they have to do, but we provide them Id with ideas and materials and they uh, do their own thing um, as they wish. Um, we have uh, an interesting phenomena uh, in Finland that we have, uh, for example, got the uh, media uh, companies to work with us. And for example, the TV companies, the TV channels in Finland provide free uh, airtime to promote the campaign and materials, uh, videos, animations, if we have them. And, um, and this is uh, quite unique, I think. Um, and it's uh, in, in, in that way we can reach uh, a huge number of viewers uh, over the year. And they continue these campaigns uh, not only during this week that we have in February, but also throughout the year. So that is, um, that is a, a very good uh, thing that we have reached. Another good example about how we see uh, the positive sides of uh, internet and, and living online is uh, Nordic Game Week. And uh, I think you probably all have heard lots of talks and read lots of uh, papers, uh, articles about gaming and the influence of gaming to young people and children. And mostly I would say they are negative in their sense that they say that, that uh, most of these things, and I, I think journalists especially uh, like to kind of uh, focus on the negative side of gaming effects and all that. Well, we want to say that, okay, we play games because it's fun. Uh, it's good. And, and we learn from games and we can do it together, uh, adults, children, and, uh, and so on. So we have uh, developed this Nordic Games Week. We call it Nordic Game Week because now it's, it's with the Nordic countries. Um, the idea is free, anyone can, can uh, start it. Uh, we, we coordinate this, so we can't really coordinate the whole Europe at the moment, but, uh, but uh, if you think this is a good idea, just, uh, you can contact us and uh, we'll be happy to help you with uh, some ideas and materials. Okay, um, well, media literacy, media education, is not just for minors. That's something we have discovered. We have been working, focusing mainly for with uh, focusing on to children and young people and to professionals working with children and young people. Over the last couple of years, we have started to think that, well, that's not enough. We can't wait for the next 20 years for these little kids to grow up and, and behave well. You all know the, the phenomena in social media, the hate speech, etc. And who's doing that? It's the adults. It's people who are not in any formal educational system anymore. Uh, it's anybody. So we need to start to focus on the adults as well. I don't have any good examples for this. We, ha like I said, we have just started to develop ideas how to do this and how to reach the adults so that we could actually influence them. Well, uh, I, uh, I talk about um, critical media literacy and, um, and critical thinking. Um, is, it, is it actually a good thing? Is it something that we want as a society or is it something that uh, is good for, uh, for the economy? Um, I don't, I don't know. I actually don't have a good answer to this. 
we think about the good positive things, you know, like 3D printing and all, all this internet of things and all these. This can be very nice and good things. They will change our everyday lives. We want to teach people to become critical and, and critically media literate. Um, have we actually thought about what may happen when they become critical? When, they, uh, when, when people actually start to think? So this is an old dilemma starting from the uh, Greek uh, philosophy that uh, when we teach people to read and write, they may actually read things that, that we don't want them to read. They don't, uh, they don't just follow the rulers and the opinions of the rulers. They may actually think for themselves. So that's the other side of the coin. Uh, so why we need media education? Um, quite often we think that media literacy is the end uh, of the whole process. It's not. We need it for these things that are on the right-hand side. Good life, peace, functioning democracy and functioning economy. These are the things that we, we do education for, not just for the skill. And um, with this, I actually will uh, wrap up. I'll have some materials with me. I have some of this uh, leaflet with me, why we need media education. I also have some copies of a booklet that we have produced for uh, parents and, um, and teachers, uh, healthcare professionals, working with young families, uh, families with young children, etc. So it's called Children and Media. Give something to talk about with, uh, with uh, children, young people and, and adults. And then I also have some copies of, of a booklet which we made, uh, which tells uh, a little bit more about um, who's doing what in Finland in terms of media education. But um, now I've used all my time and I'll thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you.